In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to take the words from the reading last evening that was from the first of Peter's epistles for our consideration this morning. This thought of a living stone. Now, as one ages, particularly among homilists, there, I think, is the allowance for less um, theology and more musing. <laughs> a living stone. I'm close to the age of some of you, and some are beyond. <laughs> Way beyond. <laughs> but my life has been spent during an era of space exploration and great scientific effort. I think as persons of faith, we have to say that much of that effort has been with the desire to somehow disprove the existence of God. But exploration into space and exploration into many other places has returned to us pieces of rock from the moon and now even from Mars, right? Some of the exploration, the rover there, at least pictures of it from Mars. And the effort has been to try and find life in those places. <clears throat> Well, certainly there's matter, if I remember my science at all. It's been a long while back since I've cracked those books. But what is meant by a living stone from which is hewn living stone? Remember the admonition that if there is not adequate praise of God, that the very stones would be commanded to offer their praise. Well, the one that is being referred to, of course, and Peter gives reference to this Old Testament <coughs> prophecy as well, the one being the chief cornerstone, who is truly our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the one who has laid for us the foundation that is the right understanding of God, the right understanding of ourselves. This teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ was anticipated. Sometimes even philosophers like Justin, the philosopher, gives uh, kind of a bow to those who didn't even know the God of Israel and yet somehow maintain these seeds of the Logos. And this uh, is a thankful thing, something we should give thanks for because this is exactly how the Spirit of God has worked to prepare the ears and the hearts of those who would 
hear the proclamation of good news. They had somehow imagined this or heard of it in different ways. And then that is confirmed in them by the preaching of the gospel. We celebrated a feast just in this past week where we speak of the mother of God being the one who anticipated this proclamation by being the one who became the temple that would bear God. And she appeared in a temple that since the time of the destruction of Jerusalem after the prophets and after the Aryan kings and their being taken into captivity into Babylon, the temple that remained did not contain this presence of God even when it was restored. But this one, the Theotokos, becomes the temple, the one who is bearing God in the flesh. This teaching of our Lord's coming in the flesh is what changes us. It's what changes the world. And it is the message that Peter is summarizing in that first and part of the second chapter and others that were read last evening. That the Lord has come, God has come in the flesh in order to redeem us, in order to restore us to Himself. And this message is something that has to change us. Remember, in the context of all the words that Peter had written and we heard last evening, he recalls the Old Testament command to be holy as I am holy. This gospel that we preach even in its simplest form, must be a gospel that begins the process of transformation. It must begin in us the work that takes a lifeless stone, as it were, and gives it life. This preaching of the gospel is not just something for us to hear and to nod in agreement and say, yes, I believe. But then to see the fruit of that belief. To see a life that is daily making the effort to approach the holiness with which it was intended from the beginning to be whole. So, hearing, <clears throat> believing, confessing this faith, you have been seed sowers. You have been ones in this place now for 20 years within the canonical Orthodox faith, but even before when there were those seeds of the Logos in you and others. That the gospel is being proclaimed, seeds are being sown, and these seeds bear the life that is a new life in Christ. They may fall upon rocky soil, but if we might even expand our Lord's parable there 
and consider how even rocks might be transformed into living stones, we might see the work that is still before us. We have to be transformed from our lifelessness, <clears throat> from that hard matter into softened hearts, into lives that are showing the very life of our Creator. So continue this good work, because this will be a work that will draw all men. The Holy Spirit will do this work. It doesn't need clever um, mission kind of uh, ways and means. <coughs> Just hear it. Hear the gospel. Accept it. Confess it. And have it become a life-changing word in you. And then being stones crying out, the world will see. Those around you will see. They will hear. And they will want to do like those apostles seeking the Lord in the readings this morning. You will say, come. Come and see. So leave these doors open and Live lives that are invitations to the world to come and to have this lifeless, hard stone of a life changed into living stones. Doing so 20 years will seem as nothing before the eternity that is before you and all who will hear the message of our Lord Jesus Christ because of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.